What is it about these characters that keeps them relevant and popular all these years later? Uh, Pooh is still popular today because it's the friend you always want. You want someone around who is just gives you this hug of unconditional love. He wears a sweater and the sweater is about the heart and the love and he represents joy and it's ultimately a friend we all want to have in life. And I believe, you know, there's this thing when you grow up, we all like taught that we should become more serious and real and and but that doesn't mean we have to deny ourselves of joy. And it's very important, even as a grown-up, to keep opening your heart, to keep being joyful, to keep uh, remembering what's important, that the child within you is as important as the responsibility you have taken on in life now. Do you have a personal favorite Pooism? <laughs> my, my personal favorite one is just basically say, oh, bother. You know, he, there are many great Pooisms I love, a lot of deep ones and wise ones and loved ones, but the one is, oh, bother. <laughs> is like, says everything, because it's basically, oh bother, I'm just moving on. <laughs> what are some pearls of wisdom from Pooh that audiences can apply to their own lives uh, during these uncertain times? Uh, I, I, I believe, you know, certain wisdoms of Pooh's people apply in their lives this day and age is truly, you know, to, to remind them that is sometimes to laugh at themselves, not to take everything too serious, that there is an inherent wisdom in the simplicity of life. And the Pooisms who have real relevance are these simple, uh, I would say, uh, the Pooisms who have real, real relevance today still are, are these, 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 these simple sayings that touch us on an emotion level, on a humorous level, and have, this, have wisdom to it. And it's like, ultimately, they're childish, but they have in incredible depth. Did working on this film bring back any childhood memories you can share? Um, you know, working on this film brought many childhood memories back because, you know, I, I grew up and I had stuffed animals and I had a bear and the thing is my parents had a house next to a forest so I always went out with my stuffies almost, and, and run out into the forest and created my games and played imaginary games and that was uh, just one of the things I really just always enjoyed. So making this movie was a direct relationship with growing up and I was thinking I, sometimes, you know, it almost get, gets a little too close, life imitating art or art imitating life. Which of the animals from the Hundred Acre Wood do you most relate to? The animal I relate most to is, is really Pooh. And close second is Eeyore and Piglet. But and there's a little bit of hybrid. I mean, I have a little bit of Eeyore and Piglet in me, especially while directing. <laughs> but, uh, there's this more moment of worry and fear. And then there comes the Eeyore. And, and, uh, but uh, Pooh is the one I really connect with most. Do you think the time is right for a film like this? Why or why not? I, I believe, you know, Crystal Robin is a film that I felt is really needed in the time we live in. And it's, it's more relevant than ever because we all work too much. We all are guilty of not really connecting with the people we love or not connecting enough with them. One should really also feel often there are very few people who really understand the meaning of doing nothing and the balance between work and vacation. And, uh, and I just can't speak for myself, but. Most of the time, if I'm taking a vacation, I, after like a week, I feel guilty, said I should do something. And so it's, it's truly, I think, we live in a time which it's all about productivity. How much can I do? How, how much can I work? Instead of really reflecting that uh, I should work less, reflect more. And maybe if we work less, we would be less, have like be less aggressive, be more loving to our coworker, be more understanding, because I believe the more you work, the more tense you get, the more burned out you get, the more tired you are, the more, more, more cranky one becomes. <laughs> so, and usually you become, mostly you're cranky with the people you love most, which is because that's the people you're surrounded by, so. Um, basically, there, there, there's this, this moment ultimately where, where Pooh decides that he is taking the courage to re-enter, to go through the tree and, re and come out the other side to, to a place where he has never been before. So for Pooh, it's very courageous. It's, it's like leaving the 100 acre woods behind and entering a world he hasn't been. And, it, and it's like ultimately that for, for me, that's a sort of, sort of metaphor of, of stepping forward, taking, taking the risk of going on an adventure and, and basically going on that adventure and finding new f frontiers of yourself 
and also opening up to a world you're not, you, you don't know of. But that world brings often uh, surprises and miracles and, and, and in our case, uh, an adventure and joy. One of the things we designed very early on in the script is Chris Robin, as a child, when he leaves his childhood, leaves Hundred Acre Woods, he basically goes to boarding school, he has to wear a uniform. Then he grows up, he has to go to war, he wears another uniform. He then goes to a job, he has to wear, wear a suit. So all the, 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 these uniforms and the suit, they all represent a straight jacket. And ultimately, when he re-enters the Hundred Acre Woods and he's crawling through the tree into the Hundred Acre Woods, he sort of sheds that straight jacket. He gets, the, he gets stuck in first because he can't even get through the tree and Pooh asks him, oh, you must have eaten honey. <laughs> but, but he didn't, but it's, it's basically him shedding his layers and him fide, finding his own new self. Um, I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, as a director, you, you know, you have, I'm, I'm like directing the movie, I have my own vision of the movie, and then, then I'm thinking to myself, okay, what's, what's, who is the audience I'm making this for? You know, I'm making this for kids who are six, eight years old, and also making it for my, myself and my generation and then generation of my parents. But yeah, I really want, the, what I want, why I wanted to do Chris Robin is to reintroduce Winnie the Pooh to a new generation. And, uh, and I'm thinking to myself as I'm directing, how would I feel if I'm like six, eight years old being with these characters? And I, I often put myself in the place of a kid directing this movie. And, and that, that sort of inner child to imagine it and working within, with, with, with that point of view is, is something that uh, really inspired me. You, you know, every time when, when we, like, uh, when we worked, uh, basically when we took on the, this, this, this adventure, is as, as, as you start directing a movie, you step into a world, you create a world around you, and you live and breathe this world. And, and in this case, it was uh, a world uh, that was filled with joy, laughter, and heart. And that, you know, affects your personal life. So what, and, and which was the most satisfying thing for me is creating a world that has heart, creating a world that has joy, and sharing that with the rest of the world. So often, you know, we were all crammed on this one tent, uh, everybody together. Michael Eames, the animation supervisor, Chris Lawrence, the, the visual effects uh, supervisor, Renee Wolf, my creative partner, like we all were on, on, underneath the, the, this tent and this monitor and, and basically as, as we're shooting, uh, I could instantly have fe like discuss the scene of how we're gonna translate animation, what would work, what wouldn't work, and it's a constant uh, discussion of a cre creative stream that went on to, to in the realization process of this film.